Hello. My name is yes. Bob Bartels, and uh, next to me is uh, my co-author, Tomo Cherovsek. Uh, we are going to present a paper, The Evolution of Cadria Conferences. And first of all, we would like to, um, to give you a short uh, insight of uh, on our collaboration, which has been uh, long and lasting. Uh, we've been working together on the uh, repository Cuming cat, and uh, that means that it's not not just a thing which is happening uh, once in a while, but this is so to say creating a connection uh, over and over. I would like to ask you, Tomo, uh, what is actually a, a bibliometric approach? What does that refer to? Okay, I would also like to say hello to everybody. It's strange to be online and not to see people in person, but uh, let's give it a go. So as we started to work on the paper, we wanted to try uh, to find the right perspective and bibliometric approach uh, was one of them to really uh, demonstrate what is the relevance of the conference. Um, as we know, one of the most important inputs uh, to the research and cooperation is to exchange ideas. This is one important aspect. And the other aspect is how valuable the research output actually is. And this is measured through bibliometrics. And bibliometrics always uh, has to do something with references and how people use the works that were published in the past. And uh, as we speak about the conferences, we try to find a way to measure the impact of conferences as a whole and of individual authors, tracks, and so on within specific uh, set of conferences. In our, in our case, the Cadria conferences. And an important impact to this uh, sharing of knowledge represents an open access. And maybe Bob, if you would share a word or two about open access, because we know in practice, we have many different notions what open access actually is. Yeah, right. Uh, well, open access is actually not a novel term. It has been uh, around for, for quite some time. And uh, the repository, repository you see in the background here is a very good example where uh, uh, some years ago the, the sibling associations decided to make all the papers publicly available. There, there is no business model in, in the sense that uh, Cadria or Icadia or Arcadia wants to make money with it. The, um, the best uh, reward is, uh, is attention uh, and in order to, to get attention, uh, your materials need to be available without any, any payment. Um, it, it means, so to say, if we are talking about Cadria, which is celebrating this year, the 25th anniversary, one can say that there has been a, a very, very steady output uh, in the first years, uh, not as many as nowadays, but still very soon, uh, the border of uh, 2000 com uh, conference papers will, uh, will be reached. And, um, um, and in this regard, I will uh, now quickly switch to the, um, to the paper in the, in the background. Here is the graph, which is showing, so to say, this, uh, this steady uh, output. OK. Maybe, um, Bob, you have uh, a long-standing uh, uh, experience on organization of conferences, not only as an author, but also as an organizer. What does it really take to make a good conference in terms of programming? Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, question. Um, first of all, a, um, a conference team will start to, to define the, the conference topics. 
so that uh, the people who are going to submit our abstracts can characterize the abstract. On the other hand, in the meanwhile, organizers are uh, uh, attracting reviewers and also they will have to, uh, to identify um, their, uh, their areas of, uh, of expertise. Then it comes to, 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 to the review assignments and the idea is that, so to say, there's a good match between the submission and, uh, and the reviewer. Uh, some abstracts will make it to a full paper, others will not. Uh, papers will have to be revised at a certain point. Uh, the, the, the quality control is, uh, is completed. And then another hard uh, task is coming for the organizing committee that is uh, grouping these people these papers into, uh, into meaningful sessions, and it will all be depicted in, um, in, in, in proceedings. And uh, what we did uh, in the framework of this paper, we were collecting these topics as well, uh, because it, it would allow to, um, uh, to see how the field is uh, progressing. Um, from my side, I would ask you, Tomo, uh, you have also been uh, in touch with many, many conferences. Can you say that there is something like a tangible, uh, long-lasting uh, result of, uh, of a conference? Of course, uh, in the past, uh, we used to carry one bag and put the book that is called Proceedings in that bag and we happily went home. So nowadays, this is going into digital uh, transformation, including due to recent uh, situation, it uh, also transmitted the way we present the results. So the only tangible results that is, uh, results that are measurable are the outputs that authors provide first in writing, then in presentation. And we very much look forward uh, to measure that as we go throughout the years. Right. Um, uh, practically spoken, what were in this uh, study the, the steps which were, were, were taking? Uh, the data was gathered from the, the, the repository, the Cumin Cat repository, and what happened afterwards, Domo? So, uh, as you can read more in the paper, uh, and if you ever did any type of analysis, you know that clearing out the data is essential to ensure that we have really something that is relevant. So we must take care about the descriptors. We need to uh, establish canonical forms of names and everything that is being used also for the descriptors in terms of keywords because we have different variations sometimes due to English and uh, American uh, due to US or uh, UK English and all other variations. And of course, uh, it is important that uh, we also uh, take into account everything that relates to the measurements of the actual use of digital content. And in recent years, uh, we have uh, many webometrics solutions and we have used the uh, one from the Google. Maybe, uh, Bob, if you can shed some light on the outcome of automated extraction, uh, extraction of content and how does it look like? Yeah, right. If, if, if you would collect uh, uh, the terms, the most frequent terms from uh, a repository like uh, CumingCat, uh, then uh, you can see this in, 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 in the first table, uh, it needs definitely cleaning. I would claim that hardly any of the, uh, of, so to say, the most frequent terms is, is very useful. Design uh, is too general, D is a stopper, digital architecture, architectural, uh, that, that does not make sense. So. Um, and even beyond the cleaning, uh, one could consider not to work with singular terms, but with so-called engrams. 
a, a very well-known engram is, for example, building information model. It is a trigram because it's consisting of three terms. Uh, however, building information uh, would be a, a bigram, uh, information modeling uh, also, but in, in, uh, together with, uh, with building information modeling, it's, it's delivering far more useful information. Now, if we are coming back to the uh, metrics of a conference, uh, how, how would you define these, uh, Tomo? Are there several levels? Yes, basically, uh, we can look at authors and how they appear uh, on different papers. And uh, then we can look at the content. So on an article level, and what is the content of these articles. And on a broader level, we have series. So we have two, three main levels, author, article, and series. And what we wanted to do is to establish uh, quantitative and qualitative metrics, for example, for author, if we speak about the quantity, we are interested how many authors participated uh, at specific conference, what is the frequency of most uh, productive authors in a specific conference, and so on. Uh, and as we are speaking about authors, maybe Bob, if you quickly present who is the most productive author over the years of yeah, conferences. Yeah, right. Uh, it, 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 it is really the case that the, the time is growing and after this question we will have to terminate. But uh, the winner is uh, John, John Giro. Uh, very, very productive. Uh, we made an, an, a distinction between uh, the role of uh, first author, uh, 18 times, four times single author, but also not always uh, the first author, overall a, a large production. So th these authors do have the, the most, uh, the, the largest number of, uh, of um, of conference papers within the series of, uh, of Cadria. We would have loved to, to say more about this, but uh, I would give uh, uh, Tomo the chance to speak the, the last word in this presentation. Maybe um, a couple of interesting findings as we are exploring what uh, was actually produced throughout the years and how people describe their use, uh, their uh, actual output. What is interesting is that uh, they mostly describe their output with two grams uh, in simple uh, words that they use uh, two keywords to describe what uh, they are talking about in their papers. And uh, what is really interesting uh, in that is uh, that uh, this, uh, keywords are actually quite well spread uh, throughout the years and you can get quite uh, interesting insight into the development of hot topics throughout uh, the years and we were trying to find uh, a way to visualize how different topics are evolving and how they relate to each other and maybe uh, Bob uh, if you say a little bit more on uh, the content from the point of view of frequency mm -hmm. of papers and how they evolve over the years. I would love to do so, Tomo, but uh, we are running out of time. So uh, I, I would propose to stop at this moment, uh, take a look at the paper, and we hope to, uh, to meet you in the, in the future in a, in a physical uh, setting. We wish you all the best uh, and look forward to see you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.